Da, uh, Council and Commission Statements, International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. Before I open the debate, I would like to inform you that in order to request KDI and blue cards, it will be possible to use both the standard registration and a new system allowing members to register electronically. So therefore, I invite you to always bring your voting card. Should you wish to register for KDI, I invite you to do so starting from now without waiting for the end of the debate. Having said this, I open the debate. Uh, I'm happy to, to welcome the presidency, and I would like to give the floor immediately to Mrs. Uh, Minister, Madame Tupurainen. The floor is yours. Thank you, Honorable Madam President, Honorable Members of the Parliament. The International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists was established in memory of the death of Cislan Dupont and Claude Berlon, two French journalists killed while reporting in Mali on November 2, 2013. Media freedom is an indispensable pillar of our democratic societies. Journalists are among the guardians of properly functioning democracies. They act as public watchdog, helping to inform and empower citizens where there is no freedom of speech, there is no democracy. For this reason, freedom of expression, media freedom and pluralism are guaranteed in the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights. Yet, across the globe, journalists face risks and attacks simply for carrying out their work. Too often, investigations into violence or threats of violence against journalists and media outlets are slow, incomplete, and fail to bring the offenders to justice. 31 journalists have been killed worldwide in 2019 alone, more than 800 in the last decade. In nine out of 10 cases, the killers go unpunished. Impunity is the key obstacle to ensuring journalist safety, resulting in self-censorship and chilling effect on the exercise of freedom of expression. The investigations and judicial proceedings following the horrific and unacceptable killings of Maltese journalist Daphne Garuana Galicia and Slovak journalist Jan Kuciak have to this day have to this day not been concluded. These crimes have shocked European public opinion. The European Parliament has made clear in its resolutions on media pluralism and media freedom in the European Union that, that we have a duty to guarantee the freedom of expression and of the press, including the safety and security of journalists. We note the call of this assembly on member state authorities to ensure the protection of invest investigative journalists from any form of intimidation, defamation charges, threats or physical attacks, as well as to create a permanent financial scheme in support of independent investigative journalism. On behalf of the Council, I can say that we are aware of the responsibility our governments have to protect journalists and defend media freedom. We will continue all appropriate means possible to respect and protect the freedom of expression. The Council held a dialogue on media pluralism and the rule of law in the digital age in November 2017. The related presidency conclusions reflected the importance of the issue and repeated the commitment by the Council and the Member States to secure a safe working environment for journalists as part of their duty to uphold fundamental rights, democracy and the rule of law. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Now I would like to give the floor to Commission. Commissioner King, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, honorable members. Uh, this is an important opportunity to, uh, to recall and mark this day, uh, to recall its uh, origins that have just been set out, uh, and uh, to underline what it stands for. Uh, we believe freedom of expression is a fundamental human right that should apply for everyone, everywhere. An environment where journalists are free to report on any topic, 
on all platforms without censoring themselves is the key to media freedom. But today, journalists' safety is not guaranteed, even as we've just heard in Europe. Far too often, journalists and media workers find themselves attacked, persecuted, harassed, or, or intimidated for carrying out their work. Uh, uh, again, we've just heard some striking figures. In 2018 alone, 94 journalists and media staff were killed across the globe in work-related incidents, uh, as reported by the International Federation of Journalists. Hundreds more have been subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention uh, without ever having been tried uh, in court. According to UNESCO, only 10% of the 930 cases of killings of journalists from 2006 to 2016 worldwide have, as yet, been resolved. Impunity for these crimes, getting away with these crimes, multiplies their impact. It erodes democratic societies by fueling fear, mistrust, and anxiety. So, so what are we trying to do about this? Uh, respect for freedom of expression is uh, integrated in all our policies and our development programs. Uh, the EU provides support and legal assistance via uh, the Mechanism for Human Rights Defenders, uh, a network that delivers fast response for human rights defenders under threat, including covering journalists. The EU also supports the European Centre for Press and Media Freedom uh, and the Media Pluralism Monitor. In 2019, a series of pilot projects will foster cooperation between journalists and self-regulatory bodies, fund cross-border investig investigative journalism, and increase support for journalists who find themselves under threat. The Commission has proposed to include a dedicated budget in the next MFF uh, as part of the Creative Europe programme. The Commission has also spearheaded work to counter online incitement to violence and hatred by means uh, of the Code of Conduct on Combating Illegal Hate Speech. Uh, on this too, the EU is currently transposing new legislative provisions in the Directive on Audiovisual Media Services. In these uh, and other ways, we consistently stand up for uh, the themes uh, sy sy symbolised by this day, and we oppose in bilateral contacts with third countries, as well as in multilateral and, and regional discussions, any legislation, regulation, or political pressure that does not respect international human rights standards on freedom of expression. Simply proclaiming the right to freedom of expression it is not enough, it is not sufficient. States must also fulfill their obligation to protect freedom of expression and the safety of journalists by providing an enabling legal environment, by taking criminal threats against journalists seriously, and by vigorously prosecuting actual attacks. As has just been recalled, uh, the recent assassinations of investigative journalists Daphne Caruana Galicia uh, and Jan Kushak, and indeed uh, of the Saudi national uh, Jamal Khashoggi, show sadly uh, that no part of the world is immune to such crimes. Uh, the Commission recently highlighted the, the fundamental role of journalists and free and pluralistic media in promoting and upholding the rule of law uh, in its communication on strengthening the rule of law within the Union uh, of July this year. A and again, on the actual International Day on the 2nd of November, in her uh, declaration, uh, the High Representative paid tribute to all those who lost their lives and suffered attacks in the exercise of their freedom of expression online and offline. The EU firmly condemns the increase in crimes against journalists, both offline and online in cyberspace. Uh, the Commission, uh, on the particular case that's already been raised, uh, has called on the Maltese authorities, uh, in the case of Mrs. Caruana Galicia, to ensure that justice is done after all, a functioning democracy cannot thrive without free, diverse, and independent media. Chair, honorable members, uh, thank you for the opportunity to discuss this very important theme today. Thank you very much.